I'm Dr. Ranjan, and this is our entire team who looked after this young doctor from Ethiopia who came to us for further management. On my extreme right is Dr. Dinesh, next to that is Dr. Kamal, and we have Dr. Zaidi, who is a senior consultant in surgical oncology, who was primarily responsible for the surgery which he undertook for the beautiful recovery this young doctor made. She is Mariam. She came to us from Eris for a picture which was quite suggestive of a Golan Barre syndrome, which is a disease of the nerves and is an autoimmune disease which affects the nerves in the hands and legs. But over a period of time, the young girl developed the complications of Gulanbari in the form of difficulty in breathing for which she had a tracheostomy and she had a feeding tube in her stomach. She basically came to us with a pretty bad condition called a fistula in the trachea with infection and with gastric symptoms. And that is where our whole team took care of her and that's you find her today as she is today. Dr. Dinesh. AIDP GBS in itself is a very serious condition but fortunately once the critical phase is over patients they tend to have a really good recovery. Somehow the public awareness about this disease is still lacking but we had this young lady with us, she has, herself is a medical student and uh, she had AIDP GPS on top of that she also had tracheoesophageal fistula to make things worse. But in this whole recovery the most important and the credit should go to her and her parents for the kind of mental resolve that they had through all this journey. She was uh, here with us for a long time and uh, GBS in itself takes a really long time for the rehabilitation and making that ship to the pre-GBS state and she had been really strong for all this. Um, we had been fortunate to have the whole team with us and uh, Dr. Zaidi sir did the surgery and really fixed the fistula that she had been suffering from and eventually she had been having good nutrition, good physio rehabilitation and the improvement is really significant now. We hope her all the best for the future. Dr. Kamal sir. Hi, I'm Dr. Kamal, uh, consultant in general medicine. I am one of the doctors looking after Mariam. Uh, as it's already briefed by Dr. Dinesh and sir, uh, GBS is a complicated illness. At times when the severe form gets complicated, we need tracheostomy and other supportive measures to pull through the patient. And exactly what happened with her also. Uh, the because of the trachea tracheostomy being there for a long time, there was a tracheoesophageal fistula, and it's really a bad thing to have in these cases. Otherwise, in GBS, you have a poor nutrition and other things. The muscles were very weak and all that. So, with we have tried many times fixing this fistula in the first phase, but didn't succeed that way. But luckily. Uh, after a certain period, maybe after one year or so, we have re-explored her thanks to Dr. Zaidi and his team. Uh, this time uh, we have successfully done that and uh, it's a good thing for the patient and now she's eating very well and overall there's a significant recovery post fixing the fistula. So we'll pass over to Dr. Zaidi for his comments on surgical part. I am Dr. Zaidi. I am a cancer surgeon. And uh, I'm thankful to Dr. Ranjan and Dr. Kamal who referred uh, her to me uh, for surgery. Initially, when I saw her for the first time, you know, after seeing all uh, her general condition and all the available history, you know, I was initially skeptical uh, whether the surgery will be successful for her or not. So initially, but I, I, I did not lose hope. I just wanted to, you know, assess her completely. So we did her, did her endoscopy, a bronchoscopy to visualize her, uh, you know, food pipe and the airway and we found you know multiple holes inside uh, you know the airway and the food pipe you know with multiple fistulae especially on the right side. Her tissues uh, were very friable 
Okay, and and you know, I I had this fear in mind that you know when I start stitching the food pipe and the trachea after separation, you know the sutures might not hold because of her poor nutrition. She was very weak, and so with these doubts in mind, you know initially we, uh, you know I was skeptical, but then then I you know went ahead with the surgery after complete assessment. Though I am a cancer surgeon, I rarely get involved in surgeries for benign diseases. But you know we have experience of lot of uh, esophageal cancers and uh, airway cancers which we do. Okay, so based on that experience, you know we uh, did her surgery, and uh, it was in the November first week uh, when we you know we had few challenges uh, because of the multiple surgeries uh, in the past. Her tissues were very friable and very thin. So plus uh, the second thing, you know, you know there is a nerve which goes on both sides of the airway. Okay, which is responsible for the voice. So we had to save the nerve because we were, you know, doing the surgery from the right side. We had to safeguard this nerve. But you know, after multiple surgeries, normally the nerve is not identifiable. So, but but luckily, fortunately, we were, you know, uh, uh, we, we could find the nerve during the surgery, and then we safeguarded it, and then we separated the food pipe from the airway. And during the operation, we did endoscopy as a guide, you know, so that uh, you know we could uh, suture the right area, and then we brought some muscle from the chest, and you know we just butt rest the muscle between the airway and the foot pipe, and then we put sutures, and then then we after the surgery we were just keeping our fingers crossed uh, about the recovery, but fortunately I think she she had a beautiful recovery, and uh, then she fully recovered. And I think almost for the last one month we have started her uh, slowly uh, on uh, liquid, and then now she is able to take semi-solid diet. So her diet, uh, you know, gradually will uh, you know uh, increase uh, to solid diet. But right now I think she has been able to take uh, you know all semi-solids without any major problem. So let us hope that uh, she recovers well. Uh, the next step would be to close her uh, airway. She has a tracheostomy through which she is breathing. So maybe after a few months we can think of uh, closing that area also. Okay, I am Maria Stad. We have been through the, this problem for over now two years and about six months. Uh, it is the most difficult type of disease or problem we have faced and encountered and we are forced to sh shoulder. I think thankfully Maria, also I'm not a, her father, her spirit is a critical factor which pulled us all through. She has never complained. We have been through the worst and imagine a person without having a proper diet for over two years, but she has never complained. She was always smiling and hopeful. And last year when we came here, we came here with a lot of hopes and expectations, but last year was a period of ups and downs, hopes followed by frustrations and all that. I We spent nearly, no, 10 months and we went back home expecting some recovery on her own. We just went some at times on a daring point with all the, those problems. We were giving her some food because otherwise she couldn't, she couldn't have survived. This time, honestly, when we come back to India, I was hoping to travel to Chennai because I have lost hope here. I, I, I thought that it was pointless staying here. But when we came here, we were uh, suggested and referred to Dr. Zaidi, and we just come up with some suggestions, and we discussed with her, and she told that it may this may be workable. And the first one month, well, it, it was very much uh, of a period of anticipation, expectations, and what to come, we didn't know. And when we went through the gastrograph the gastrography test, and when we saw. There was no leak for the first time because for almost all trials I was there inside looking at the leaks and uh, taking my moral down the first time. The, it was without a leak and I was happy. And now we are able to feed her. And now uh, I was telling Dr. Zaidi uh, the other day that she has, last year she was 26 kg. Last week she was 40. And today I get a measure of her and she was 42. Uh, on this 10 days gap, she has gained 2 kg. It means a lot for us and for... If you remember last year, she was 26 kg. We came from 26 kg and it's almost getting double her uh, mass. So I think we are ho happy and we are hopeful and praying for God that this will continue and she will 
will be relieved from this wheelchair and one, once, one day she will be able to walk. And through all this, we are very thankful and for the team, we are just feeling at home, knocking, calling every time, all the three teams. And this year we found a very humble and compassionate person, Dr. Zaidi. I'm just calling him late in the night, in the morning. Even yesterday I was calling him. I was worried. She, has, she told me that she has some um, feeling around here. I just called him in the day. And even the evening I called him, I should come tomorrow. And he agreed. That's how he do, and he's very compassionate and humble person. I'm very grateful, doctor. And let's hope that going back home, she will recover very fast and will see Thank the you. better days. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, throughout the whole four years I've spent in medical school, they always teach us about how I think doctors should be. I always thought that was a noted fiction, but I actually got to see it in person how actual doctors are supposed to be and how they teach us. I never thought that those existed, but just only on movies. But here I, I can't ask for more compassionate, more caring and more professional doctors ever. I, uh, I only would have hoped to come as a tiny bit as more as professional and caring as one of these. That would be a great achievement. Thank you.